Hello, this is Melissa, your entrance exam queen. And on this channel, we are all about helping you pass your exam with ease and confidence. This is gonna be a lesson on kind of the difference between a dwelling policy and a homeowner's policy. Um, before we dive into that, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out as a YouTube creator. You can also like the video if it has helped you with understanding this material. You can also drop a comment below about what state you are in and what test you are taking, whether it's property casualty, personal lines, or the adjuster's exam. And I will tell you what's important, what to focus on, and how I can help you pass your exam. You can also check out our Facebook study group. If you just Google insurance exam queen on Facebook, you'll find it. And I also have a website, insuranceexamqueen.com, where you can find my class series videos that go more into depth into all of these topics. YouTube is kind of like the snack where my class series are the full meal. So if you really prefer videos, visuals, charts, graphs, easy explanations, and real life scenarios, that's what you're going to find in my class series videos. All right, so let's jump into it. Dwelling versus homeowners. So first of all, I want to clarify that both of these are known as property policies, and they're going to come on the uh, property side of things. So like if you're taking a property and casualty exam and you're taking it together, like they just, this is the PNC exam, you really don't care the difference between what's property and what's casualty. But some states separate property from casualty and dwelling in homeowners is more on the property side of things. Although there are some coverages on homeowners that will show up on the casualty side because they are casualty coverages. But um, just, just to kind of clarify there. So let's talk about this for a minute. What is the difference? A dwelling policy is different from a homeowner's policy because a dwelling policy does not require, does not require the owner of the policy to live at the house. A dwelling policy does not require the owner of the policy to live at the house. A homeowner's does require the owner of the policy to live at the house. Okay. And this is the phrase owner occupied. Owner so I'm gonna actually put that in the middle. Owner, ah, I keep changing colors, it's not changing. Owner occupied. And sorry if I misspell something. Um, okay, so homeowners must be owner occupied. Dwelling does not, doesn't matter. Okay, so this is this is what that phrase means. When you see that term, when you're in your studies and you see the term owner occupied, what we're saying is that the owner of the policy, so if I buy a dwelling policy, I own this dwelling policy, I am not required to live at the house. I'm not required to live at the house. If I have a homeowner's policy, I'm the owner of the homeowner's policy, I am required to live at the house. This is the biggest difference between a dwelling and a homeowner's. And this is what makes dwelling policies really great for landlords. So a landlord is typically the one to purchase a dwelling policy because a landlord owns the house. They own the walls and the roof, but they rent out the house to someone else. So a, a landlord needs insurance if the walls in the roof were to burn down. And if they had a homeowner's policy, but they were renting it out, it wouldn't work because they're required to live there. So dwelling policies are typically purchased by landlords and homeowners are purchased by people who live and own the home at the home. Okay. Um, so that's one of the key differences between dwelling and homeowners is the owner occupied rule homeowners must be owner occupied dwelling doesn't matter 
if they're owner occupied or not. Which brings us into one of the next big differences is that dwelling policies do not come with, do not automatically, I'm gonna spell automatically wrong, do not automatically come with two big coverages, liability and contents. Okay, let's talk about those coverages real quick. Liability is if I'm responsible for, for causing harm to you, I owe you money. So let's say I have a dog, right? So I have a little dog and my dog bites you. And you now have a medical bill because of the dog bite. You, I owe you money because my dog bit you. That's liability. If I have a dwelling policy and my dog bit you, I don't have that coverage. So I would have to pay out of pocket if my dog bit you at my home that has a dwelling policy, okay? Homeowners does automatically come with, um, it does have, must have actually, so it must have both liability and contents. You can't actually get rid of it. There's my little dog barking. <laughs> you must um, have those coverages. So that's another key difference between a dwelling and a homeowner's is dwelling um, doesn't come with liability. Homeowners must come with liability. Now, what is contents coverage? Zoo, that's enough. You're safe. You're fine. Um, contents is all of your stuff, right? All of my stuff, all the things that I own. It's your clothes, your shoes, your furniture, your pots, your pan. Uh, contents is basically anything that you would take out of your house, put it into a U-Haul to another place. Anything that you would move with you from one house to another is your contents, clothes, shoes, furniture, pots, pants, all of your stuff, okay? If a dwelling policy is purchased by a landlord, they don't need stuff. They don't, it's not their stuff. If I'm a landlord, I own the house, but someone else's stuff is in it. It's the people who live there whose stuff is actually in it. So dwelling doesn't come with contents automatically. Now on a dwelling, you can purchase these. So these can be purchased on a policy, okay? <clears throat> so you can add them. They're just not automatic, okay? So you can add them. You can get them purchased and added to the dwelling policy, but they're just not automatic. <clears throat> Homeowners, must come with liability, must come with contents. It's automatic. You, you don't even have an option of removing it. It's a requirement, okay? All right. <clears throat> Another thing with dwelling versus homeowners is the coverage types. So this is the coverages that come on a homeowners. So there is um, on a home, on, on these policies, we have coverage A. You have coverage B coverage C, coverage D, coverage E, and coverage F. And it's actually important that you do remember the names of all of these coverages, but what gets a little tricky is they are named different things on homeowners versus dwelling, okay? So let's go over the names of things. So on a homeowner's, coverage A is known as dwelling, and that's basically the, the walls and the roof of the house. Same over here for dwelling as well. It is a little frustrating that they literally have dwelling policies, and then coverage A is also called dwelling. <laughs> um, but when you think about it, when we think about coverage A, it's literally saying walls and roof. And that's what a dwelling policy is all about. It's just about the walls and the roof, not about the contents, not about the liability. It's focused on the walls and the roof. So that's what dwelling means is walls and the roof. Then we have coverage B. And coverage B is known as other structure. Oh, I wanted to different color that. 
Coverage B is other structures, other structures. And this is like the, this is like the shed. This is something in the backyard. Uh, coverage B is buildings in the backyard, okay? Same for dwelling, it's also other structures. Okay, coverage C is known as contents. Contents or personal property, they will sometimes call it. And again, like we said, this is all of your stuff, your clothes, your shoes, your furniture, your pots, your pants. Now coverage C on a dwelling is also called contents. And some people go, but you said it's not on the policy. And you're totally right. It's just a placeholder. Because it can easily be added, they don't remove it like, like, like it's there on the policy document that C is contents and they leave all the definitions inside and they leave how it works inside the policy printed document. But you only have it if you see a premium charge for it. So contents on a dwelling. So again, this is our chart here, dwelling homeowners, okay? <clears throat> on a dwelling policy, in order for you to have contents, you have to see a premium charge for it on your declaration page. Otherwise, you don't have it. It'll be listed there, but just as a placeholder, in order for it to be activated, there has to be a, a dollar amount charged for it, okay? All right, coverage D is where we begin to get different. So coverage D is where we begin to get different. On a homeowner's, it is known as loss of use, loss of use. And what comes out of loss of use is two different things. One is um, fair rental value, fair rental value. And the other thing that comes out of it is um, additional living. So loss of use on a homeowner's makes up two things. One, fair rental value and additional living. Fair rental value is if I am, if my house burns down, so loss, let's just talk about loss of use for a second. Loss of use is the home burns down, I no longer have use of the house. So coverage D is gonna help me when I no longer have use of the house. There are two things I may use my house for. One, renting out a bedroom and I, I collect rent money. And two, I sleep there myself. So if my house burns down, I can't sleep there and I am missing rent money because my tenant cannot stay there either because it burned down, right? So loss of use is gonna cover those things. Fair rental value will give me the money I am missing from my tenant who had to move out because the house burned down and additional living will give me the money I need to stay at a hotel um, while my house is being repaired. So that is coverage D on a homeowners. On a dwelling, coverage D is actually just known as fair rental value. Because remember the main thing about a uh, dwelling is it's purchased by a landlord what is, what is the main, if, if a landlord doesn't live there, a landlord doesn't really need additional living. His main thing that he needs is fair rental value. <clears throat> now coverage E is where it gets really, really different because on a homeowner's, these are actually known as section two, like, like this, this is section one and this is known as section two. And section two is all about liability. This is where we kind of have a split where section one is all about property and section two is all about liability. If you're taking property and casualty separate, if in your state they're two separate exams, this is what will show up on the casualty side for you is coverage E and coverage F. Coverage E on a homeowner's is known as liability and that's that coverage again if my dog bites somebody and i owe them money then that's going to be liability is what pays out for that or if my child 
um, is swinging a golf club and, and it breaks the neighbor's window and I owe the neighbor money, my liability pays for that. Somebody comes over, uh, drowns in my swimming pool, I get sued, my liability pays for that. Um, and then coverage F on a homeowner's is known as medical payments, medical payments. And this is where I'm not at fault. Liability says I'm at fault. It's your fault. Your, your dog bit me. You're at fault. You owe me money. Medical payments is more like, it's not my fault, but I feel bad. Here's some money to take care of your medical problems. And that's medical payments. So that's the difference between liability and medical payments. And again, I have almost a two hour video on gold going over the difference between liability and medical and all the different intricacies because there's a lot of information that comes with liability and medical payments. And especially if you're taking the casualty exam, you wanna know all of those things and um, gold will have the most in-depth video on that. Then when we come to the dwelling side of things, coverage E is actually additional living additional living. And there really is no coverage F, but um, a lot, a lot of, st some states will actually put coverage F as, as liability. I'm not saying you should remember it as that necessarily, but some, some places will go into that, that coverage F on a dwelling is the endorsement for liability. So on this side of things, it would actually be, it would have to be endorsed which means added, added extra, okay? And actually, I don't think they use it as coverage F. I think they call it as coverage M or something like that. It's very rare um, for them to kind of talk about it on, on some state exams. It's only, only a handful of states talk about adding liability to a dwelling. I'm pretty sure it's coverage M or L or something like that. It's kind of weird. So don't, don't even think about, I'm just gonna actually erase that. <laughs> um, but liability has to be endorsed on a dwelling side. Now, something I wanna talk about over here for additional living. Additional living is exactly what we talked about. That would be the hotel. If my house burns down, I can't live there. It will pay for the cost of the hotel. Now, there are three different types of dwelling policies. There is a DP1, a DP2, and a DP3. And you can buy these. These are all separate policies. They kind of offer all different levels. DP1 is super basic, DP2, a little bit more broad, a little bit more coverages, DP3 is special, the most coverages available. Additional living is only on two and three. In order to get additional living on um, a DP1, it actually has to be endorsed. So a DP1 additional living has to be endorsed. You have to pay extra money for it on a DP1, okay? All right, so these are some of the um, main major differences between dwelling and homeowners. There certainly are a lot more, certainly things that we can go way more in depth into, um, but this was a quick breakdown between the difference between dwelling and homeowners. Um, and this is a good kind of starting point. Again, I highly recommend my class series, which will go way further into depth and also break these up into smaller videos <clears throat> so that you can go through everything without getting all this information all at once, okay? All right, so again, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, drop a comment below about what state you're in, what test you're taking. I'll tell you what's important and which class series that you should get. So this is Melissa, your insurance exam queen. All the loves, all the vibes to pass your exam. Have an amazing day.